Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Did you know that the longest man that ever lived on this earth was Methuselah? I don't know how many years it was. Several hundred years. But you know why God let, allowed his life to be extended so long? Because it was prophesied that after his death, the world would end. The flood would come. So what did he do? He extended this man's life so long because this is how merciful he is. He wanted everybody to, to have an opportunity to turn and to give their life and surrender to him before a flood would come. But nobody did other than those seven, those few that were in that boat. Isn't that crazy? So I know that God's spirit is constantly there trying to help us to grow and, and trying to help us to um, take a different path in moments like that. That's not the only option. Just come and let's worship and let's minister to you. Let's talk about some of these things. Now, here's what I know about every single one of us here. Every single one of us have made poor choices when we knew that the choice that we we're about to make was the wrong one. All of us have, right? All of us have said yes to that invite that we wish, man, we wish we'd have never gone to that party or gone to that house or, you know, called that person. All of us have made choices like that. We've signed the note, not knowing that seven years down the road we'd go bankrupt and turn it all in. All of us have took that extra pill or that one more drink that we wish, man, we wound up going home and getting drunk and, you know, having a DUI. Anybody been there before? All of us have overrode, overrode, is that the right word? Overridden our spirit when he said no and we said yes. Yeah. Or when he said yes or go and we said no because we were afraid. All of us have done those things. And the more we yield to our flesh, the weaker your will will become. If you're in this place and you have a weak will, why is that? Why? Because you're constantly giving into your flesh. You have to control your habit. You have the power to control your flesh. You have the power to speak to your flesh and command it yep. to not eat that second hamburger. <laughs> Seriously. Like it or not, it is what it is. You have, he's given you, he's created you to do good to your body. The more we yield to our flesh, the flesh is going to constantly crave for more. Why? That's the only word he knows. More. It's never enough. He's never satisfied. Our flesh craves for more and our spirit gets wounded. Yes. It's almost because, because rivers of living water should flow out of us. It's just like a stream that's beautiful and innocent and just vibrant. And, it's, and it, there should be no dams, no, no, nor clutter clogging this thing up. But over time, it becomes cluttery. It becomes... Stagnant. It becomes, we allow sticks and stones and things that break our bones get in the way. And next thing you know, we're down. There's no flow. And we wonder what's going on. We're wondering what's going on. Well, we've just muddied up some things. And we need to allow the Spirit of God to come and wash us and cleanse us. And let it flow again. Amen? Amen. But do we take the time to listen? To listen to his instruction. To listen to his admonition. Um, most of us don't because we're such a fast-paced society. And so what happens when we continue to give in, our spirit, you know, becomes weak. And next thing you know, it gets darker and darker. Our life gets darker and cloudier and it gets very discouraged. Question, is it possible to turn this thing around if we find ourselves there and become fruitful once again? Is it possible to strengthen our spirit? I want to begin this morning with a question. It's a percentage question. Ask yourself this, this is for you. What percentage of my life do I yield to the Holy Spirit? If you were to ask this to your children or ask this to your spouse, or someone who really loves you and knows you, what kind of a number would they put on there? Or if you're just honest with yourself, don't put 98. <laughs> Negative 98, probably. But what, what number is there? How, how much of my life do I look to and yield to the Spirit of God, to look to Him for direction in my life. Or we just get up out of bed and just go and take off and whatever happens, happens. Sometimes I feel like that's how I, the trap I find myself. Wake up, get on a conveyor belt, just do the same thing and wind up never making any changes, never making any difference, still frustrated. 
So we got to stop and pause and, and um, evaluate and allow the Spirit of God to come and work inside of us. The message last week that Pastor Joel talked about was absolutely amazing because when God works, he works from the inside out. He works on the inside. And this morning, I want to continue along those lines, not only because I just felt like I was supposed to share this with you, but I want to talk, how, talk about how God disciples you, how what he uses to disciple you, the route that God travels on, is uh, it's, it, it's a long, worn-out trail that he travels on to every human being to get him to um, walk in victory, to, to overcome the things that are here on this earth that we contend with. Now, the, the enemy also has a road that he travels on. It, it's, it's the road to your mind. It's the road to your mind. It says he goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may, he may devour. As a matter of fact, when you look up that word, that word means with the road. And there, in other words, there's a road that he travels on, and it's always the road to your mind to capture. That's why Paul says, cast down those vain imaginations and everything that goes against the will of God. Where that's how he works in the mind. But God's got a different path. He's got a different trail. It's a trail not to your mind, not to your body. It's a trail to your spirit. That's what he uses. That's the path that he goes for and that he's, that's, the, that's the route that he's going for to disciple you and to coach you and to help you. It's the path to your spirit. What am I talking about? Thank you for asking. Here's why, here, here's this passage, Proverbs the 20th chapter. Proverbs 20 says, the spirit of man, the spirit of man is the candle or the lamp of the Lord. It's the spirit of man searching all the inner depths of his heart. Notice this, the spirit, it's the same uh, different translation. The spirit of God breathed into man is like a living lamp, a shining light searching into the innermost chamber of our being. Proverbs 18 is, so if, God, if God's want, wanting to speak to us to help us navigate in and out and guide us throughout life, through our business, with our relationships, with every aspect of our lives, he's going to speak to your spirit. He's not going to give you a feeling of emotional high and it's like, ooh, ooh, goosebumps. Oh, man, I don't have goosebumps today. I shouldn't go. No. He's not going to change your body. Some of us need to change our body, but not by a miracle that God wants to bring. He made you with that nose. Keep it. I don't want to go meddling. But he, he chooses to go to your spirit and to speak to your spirit because that's how he wants to change you. That's how he wants to disciple you. Why? Because he's, he put one just like Jesus is inside of our spirit. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you by yourself to go and contend with this world by yourself. When I leave, the father's going to send you someone just like me to be with you, not only to be with you, but to be in you. So what the Holy Spirit is to you and I was what Jesus was to the disciples. He led them, he guided them, he nurtured them, he cared for them. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit does in our lives today. And where is he? He's within our spirit. We're a spirit being. But I think we're more body conscious, we're more emotional conscious than we are God conscious. And so we have to train and build up and strengthen. That's what he wants to do, strengthen your spirit. He wants to, when you strengthen your spirit, you can strengthen your faith. Because that's where faith resides. That's where faith is. And so that's, that's the target. Proverbs 18th chapter, notice what it says here is this, the strong spirit, of, one, one says the spirit of a man, but the strong spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? It says it's, what's going to help an individual during the tragedies of life, the afflictions, the sicknesses, the stuff that we contend with, is going to be a strong spirit. So the opposite, a weak spirit, will what? Will take us down. As a matter of fact, a, a, another proverb it says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So you want to evaluate? Are you, um, are you um, falling more than you're standing up? It's a good way to evaluate. Well, that means your strength is small. Not for condemnation, but to understand that, hey, I need to be built up. I need, I need to just you know, realign my time here. Because that's how he wants, to, he wants to, to have a strong spirit so we can be able to hear him speak and get the guidance and the direction that we need rather than just 
close your eyes and point in the scripture, oh, this is what God says today. Anybody been there? What would, if I just do that, what, did he, what would he tell me? Buy gold for me that you may be rich. Ah, that's the, anybody have gold this morning? That's how I would lead my life. That, that's crazy, right? Whatever you were to say, and Judas hung himself, and you go do likewise. That'd be dangerous, right? So we, we don't, he, that's not how, he wants to guide us with a strong spirit. First John 4, 4 says that you are of God, little children, and overcome, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. Greater is the one who is in you, who's that? The spirit of God Almighty. See, with the body, you contact the physical realm. With the mind, you contact the inner realm or the soulish realm, the intellectual realm. But with the spirit, you connect with God. Amen. When, and when, you, when you get born again, when you regenerate your spirit, man, you become one with him. And when a person is born again, life begins. It says, in him was life, and this life was what lit man up, is what lights man up. But when we become born again, we can have... We can think higher because he's going to be helping us renew our mind. Uh, when the Spirit of God comes inside of us, we can love like Jesus. Why? Because he's given us a new spirit. It's good. It's good. When, when, we, when we're born again, we can obey God. We have the power. We've been empowered by grace and by his spirit um, to help us overcome the temptations that come. Every single time there's temptations and stuff that happen... There's always a way of escape, and the Spirit of God is always there helping us find that way of escape. Always. Always. When he is there, you are spiritually alive. When you said yes to Christ, there are no more excuses. We have, we're spiritually alive in him. And what we have to do is understand and know what exactly he's telling us. What is he's, the, the, natu- the natural man, you can't, you can't understand the spiritual things in the natural. It's impossible. It's a whole different level. As a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, says it this way. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. It hasn't even entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. We have no clue, right? But there are some of us who have a clue. Who are they? These things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person? I don't know who you are. I might think and project things that I know who you are, but you know who you are, and you know the stuff that you contend with. No one else knows the secrets that you have other than God himself, you and him. And so the spirit of God knows the heart of God. You're one. And think about this. The stuff that the Father has for us has been revealed to him, to the spirit, it's been revealed to the spirit of God. And then the Holy Spirit now lives within us. So he's given us access to all the things. Because he goes on to say, no, 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 go back. Go, go back. The spirit searches everything, right? For who knows the person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Next one. Now watch this. We have received... Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. Why? So that we could understand the things that have been freely given to us by God. Oh, I'm redeemed. Oh, I'm more than a conqueror. Oh, I've been transformed from death to life. Oh, I can overcome anything that comes. Oh, 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 look what the scripture says. He leads me into triumph. I'm the head and I'm not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Why? Why do I know that? Why? Because the Spirit of God helps us understand the things that He has freely given to us when we said yes to Christ. That's how He disciples you. All of a sudden, you get a different picture. You have a different framework. You have a different mindset because the old cluttery stuff, the stuff that led you down wrong paths wasn't working. So all of a sudden, He goes, hey, my Spirit will show you a different way. All you have to do is tell your flesh to say no. All you have to do is buy in and go fully all in. Go all in, because I'm all in. I went all in. What if I just went half in? What if I just let one hand hang on the cross? I didn't do that. I gave an example of how you could conduct your life. It's called denying your flesh. 
crucifying your flesh for the purpose of something eternal, something much, much greater. Not only for yourself, for your family, for your kids, but for your community, for your business, wherever you go while we're here on this earth. I love that about the Father. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. When you think about the candle or the lamp of the Lord, he's referring to Old Testament tabernacle and temple. You know, the tabernacle is a, is a picture of how God created us. Uh, we're a three-part being. We're spirit. That's the innermost part. We have a body. It's the outer part. We have a soul. That's the inner part. Well, the temple and the tabernacle were the same. They had an outer court. They had an inner court. And then they had the Holy of Holies. Does that make sense? And so when he's talking about it being the, the, the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord, understand this, that, that the, the spirit of man is not the source. It's not the candle. It's just the vehicle. It's the vehicle that God wants to use to help, to guide you, to lead you, to show you things to come. It's not the, the light. It's a vehicle for the light. Anybody ever, you, have you ever reacted to when all of a sudden light has shined upon you? At first, it's like a, a wince, right? But when light shines, all of a sudden, oh, things get clear. It's like you can see it. But when there is no light or when light's dim, things are buddy. Things are vague. When there's stuff damming up the flow, things are cloudy. We don't really understand, right? Remember this. Your spirit, my spirit, those of us who've been born again have been quickened by God. And that word quickened means it's been illuminated. It's been made alive. We were made alive and we've been quickened by his spirit. And there are two scriptures in, in Romans 8 and Galatians 5 that talk about how to be led by God's spirit. In both of those cases, if you look at the context, in both of those cases where he talks about being led by the spirit of God, it's in reference to an individual overcoming the works of our flesh, the appetites of our flesh, the stuff that we contend with. The context of, of God's spirit working inside of the believer is in direct, in, in, in direct connection with how we can overcome the things that we just are just so tired and frustrated about. Therefore, it's his spirit that God wants to use to help us, to guide us, to teach us, to admonish us, to overcome the sins of our flesh and to embrace the things that he has freely given to us by the Father. Amen. It's the spirit of God speaking to your spirit. Your mind gets renewed, becomes a new filter you begin to see things different because your mind is getting renewed. But man, I'm telling you, he does it through his spirit. And in, in, if, if the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, then there's something else that he brings. You know, a candle doesn't light up by itself. It needs, it needs fire. And so what does God use? Well, his word is his fire. His word is the light. He uses his word to enlighten us. It says right here, Proverbs 6, the commandment is a lamp and his law, his word, is light. That's how he lights that candle. That's how he shows you. He lights your candle through the word of God. Remember, the word of God is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. And usually the word that is given to the outsider, those who've never crossed over the line of faith, it's the word of salvation. But a word to the insiders, to us who are believers, it's a word of direction and guidance. That's what he wants to do in our lives. And to live our daily life by the Holy Spirit's guidance and empowerment is what we call walking in the Spirit. Amen. Walking in the Spirit is to conduct your life, your daily life, where the Holy Spirit is the one that's giving you guidance. He's the one that's showing you. He's the one that's empowering you to say no to the sins of our flesh. That's how it works. He helps you overcome all these things. And he also helps you bear fruit. Remember, love, joy, peace, self-control, all that. Those aren't individual things. When we receive Christ, they come in a package. You can't tell me, I don't have self-control. Yeah, you do. You're just not leaning into it. Everything he's given to you is already done in Christ. You have joy. You have unconditional love. You can forgive your spouse. You have peace. You have patience. You have kindness. You have self-control, you have goodness, you have faithfulness. You could be faithful. Yep. 
all this stuff happens. Now you can show yourself faithful. Amen. You can have self-control. It's just so big. No, you've weakened your will. Right. So what's my encouragement today? If, if, it's, if, if the route is to your spirit, my encouragement then is this. Train your spirit. Train your spirit. There are millions of dollars spent on this earth to train the body physically. You've got gyms. You've got all kinds of stuff. There are millions of dollars spent to train the mind, self-help books and what have you, psych- psychologists. All those are great. But then we leave the most important element, which is the spirit of man, to a 30-minute message once a week. Can't do it. It won't work. You'll never be an overcomer if it worked that way. So there are four rules that Dad Hagen taught me. And this, this teaching transformed my life as a young man, 20-year-old. I, because this is what I was looking for. I was like, how do I know it's him? How do I? So he said, I'll give you four ways on how to develop your spirit, how to train your spirit. And that's all I was doing. After I learned this lesson, that's, I felt like this, that was, I would capture my attention. That's all I did. You guys want to know him? Come back next week. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) One, meditate. Meditate on the word of God. Chew the cud. Meditate is, you you read a scripture and you just meditate and not memorize it, just chew it. You know, cow has two stomachs. They call, they chew the cud. When they eat the hay, the first mouth just gives them a lot of saliva and stuff to wet it down goes into the second stomach. It's the second stomach that has the bacteria and it's able to break it down so that it becomes nutrients and, and food and energy to the cow. So he regurgitates that back up to the first mouth or the first stomach and then it digests. Then it goes into, I know it's going to be lunch and that's nasty, but still. <laughs> but that's what he means. Meditate. Get a passage of scripture. Put yourself in the story. Don't read your Bible. Let the Bible read you. When I read David and Goliath, I have, to, I have five different ways I read it. I read it as if though I'm David. What am I going to tell my brothers when they shun me? I read it as if though I'm the brothers. You ever had anybody that's trying to make themselves look good and you were the one that were chosen? And, well, I, look, I, I find myself as a Saul. Man, what if I was leading him but I was scared because of a giant that was in my way? What do I do? So I, I put myself in the story and I let the Bible read me. Oh, he did that. Well, I did that too. Then all of a sudden I hear the spirit of God. Yeah, remember that? He shines light on certain things. And then I have an opportunity to make adjustments. That's how he works over and over. One, meditate on the word of God. Two, practice the word of God. Do it. Before you get any kind of instruction, already say yes before he even asks you to do anything. That's complete surrender. But just practice the word do it. Giving the word first place. In other words, when people are questions or stuff happens, the first thing I ask is, what does God's word say about this? Oh, I heard that on AI, or I heard that on TV last night. Oh, you know what? I'm going to call dad. Hey, you know what? I'm going to call this friend of mine. Nothing wrong with calling friends, but the first place is to get a hold of God's word. What does God's word say about this? And then when you get advice, you match it up against God's word. Make sense? That's a safe place. What is God's word? And then instantly obey the voice of your spirit. When you hear him, just say yes. Just do it. When I first came to Christ, I had different kinds of thoughts, evil thoughts, junk thoughts, ugly thoughts. Then when I came to Christ, different thoughts would come into my, fly into my head. Go to the bookstore. I'm going to show you a man I want you to meet. Like, I don't have those thoughts. So I just said, okay, let's go to the bookstore. I'm sitting on a couch watching TV, and he says, go to Sack and Pack. There's a guy that's going to be on the phone. I want you to talk to him. I'm like, I don't have those thoughts when I was evil. So I'm thinking, well, I guess it's the Spirit of God. I didn't know it was the Spirit of God, but I was like, let me go test it. Instantly obey the voice of your spirit. You have three seconds to talk yourself out of it. Yeah. In the natural. Instantly obey. Those four practices right there will absolutely change your life. Because what happens is you start looking inside rather than out here for your guidance. And those who are pursuing him will find him. 
always. He wants to make himself real to you, right? And if you've never completely surrendered, if you've never, you know, there's a passage of scripture in Romans, the 12th chapter. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. In other words, total and complete surrender is where he wants us to be at. And if we've never come to the place where we just have fire insurance, I don't want to go to hell, that's all. If we've never gone all the way, well, then we have a divided heart. We have one foot in the kingdom, one foot in the world. And don't expect for God to move on your behalf in great measures when you're half in. You want him to be all in, but you want to be half in. I don't even know how we can have faith. We can't have faith in God when we're not all in. I can't anyways. The word picture that he uses in that passage is that of a crucifixion. He goes, hey, put to death that old life and allow the new life, yield to the new life. It's a very distinct difference, and you know what it is. You know what it is. Every single day, it's daily. So some days we're going to miss it, but you can't condemn yourself, but that's just the process. It's just the process. Daily. Here's what I encourage you to do. Command your body to do something it doesn't want to do. I don't like waking up at 5 o'clock. All right, well, this week you're going to wake up at 445. And you're going to read 15 minutes of scripture. I don't want to do that. Well, I don't want to either, but I'm going to. Because I'm going to control you. You're not going to control me. I want more sleep. Well, you do, but you're not me. You've been me long enough. Now I'm, cha- I'm, I'm, I'm firing you. I'm going to listen to the Spirit of God. I'm going to listen to truth in my heart and I'm going to obey that. And it's never ending. It never stops. I thought I would, in the beginning, I said, oh, I'm going to get to this place and then I don't have to mess with this anymore. No, I still have to keep doing this over all the time. It's never ending. That's why the apostle Paul says in Galatians 5, if we walk, if we live by the spirit, let us also walk with the spirit. There are better translation says, walk in step with the spirit. In other words, the spirit of God is moving. Constantly, he's stepping, he's moving. Are we stepping with him? And some of us were way up here. Hey, come help me. The Spirit of God, we're asking him to come follow us. Hey, come bless this. I'm starting this business. Come here. I need you. Hey, I met this guy. God, help me. Help him just love on me. Stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Keep in step with the Spirit. Amen. If anything, let him lead. Just, just stay ahead. Just stay right behind him. Well, how do I know he's moving? You'll know. You'll know. Well, what if I don't hear him? Don't do nothing. Just stay. Just pause. Just wait. He is not trying to make things a secret for you. He's not trying to make things hard for you. His burden is easy. It's light. If anything, if anything, he wants more is to show himself how real he is in your life. And just because I got three daughters and all of them were raised by Natalie and myself in the same house, but every single one of those girls responded to my authority differently. (laughs) My oldest one, I could shout till I was blue in the face and it did not move her at all. Unless I would ask her to wash dishes. Then that would just like, I'm so sorry, I don't want to wash dishes. Like, that's weird. My middle one, my youngest one, I could just look disappointed. She'd start crying. Gentle, calmer voice. What I'm saying is that all of us are different. And the relationship that he has with you is you personally. It's just, it's just for you. So don't try to put how God speaks to you on your spouse or your friend. Oh, this is what God did to me. This is what he wants to do to you. It's like, no, you don't. No, it's, different. it's different. If anything, encourage him. Man, get a hold of God. Get a hold of him. He'll speak to you. He'll show you. I'm going to be praying for you. He will show. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so, so that's, that's how he works. C.S. Lewis has a quote. Is it 10 o'clock? Yes. <laughs> what do I do, Lord? Let me pray for you guys. Bottom line is... He loves you. He wants to help us. He's tired of the mess. He's tired of us living this way. He's tired of us 
frustrated more than we're tired. And what makes it more hurtful for the Spirit of God, because the Spirit of God can be grieved. He's not an it. He's a person. What grieves the Spirit of God more than anything is that He has the answers for you. But we're just not pausing in our life to listen. So He can help us. And that is my prayer, that we all just learn to stop and listen and enjoy the Spirit of God in our lives. Amen. Amen. Father, you're so good to us. We're so thankful for your love for us. And Father, redeem the next service this time, I pray in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord God, to walk by your Spirit, to listen to his voice, to obey, and man, just to let you disciple us, Lord God. We want that so much. I pray for the families this, this week, Lord God, as we do the memorial services. Just strengthen them, comfort them, love on them, I pray in Christ's name. Everyone that agreed with that said, Amen. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.